one. All right. <clears throat> In this video, we are going to create a wheel. Use a lot of what we know. And a major challenge in this video is just taking layout cautiously. Because if you do not, you might run some instances where you have to troubleshoot your way and fix your layouts. A lot of sketch layout challenges in this video. If you do run into some instances where your layouts and your sketches are not turning out the way that they are in my video or the way that you want them to, accept that with open arms. Those are the times you learn the most I've said in the past, and I'll continue to say, I can hold your hand through a lot of this, but the real learning happens when you're on your own, figuring it out and run into issues that you kind of have to problem solve and troubleshoot your way through. So let's go ahead and get started. With this wheel, we are gonna start by sketching the profile of the rim and revolving it like we did in one of the very early videos to make a donut. So let's start by sketching that profile. You're gonna sketch that profile in the front plane. So select front plane as your sketch. Oopsies, that says right plane. Let's exit that and then select front plane as our sketch. And then I'm gonna go ahead and call this sketch wheel profile. We will be doing a lot of labeling of sketches in this video because it does get complex. If you call me over and you don't have your sketches labeled, I will not help you. Make sure you have a mouse and your sketches labeled so that I can troubleshoot things, issues that you run into easier and you can troubleshoot them easier. We've got wheel profile started. I don't, I don't know why I just hit the green check mark. And let's start by just sketching a line like so. We're gonna bring that line down and I'm actually just gonna stop right there for now. All right, and I'm gonna dimension this first line that should be horizontal to the origin at one inch. And then I'm gonna set the distance from the origin to this point, the vertical distance to be 0.8, not 0.8. Double click that, change it to eight. That's what I want. We're gonna make that 0.8, I'm <laughs> still misspeaking, eight inches. All right, now the next thing we want to do is sketch a line here that is horizontal. Make sure that line's horizontal that this line's vertical, that this line is horizontal and not tied to that one. You know, the only constraint you want is horizontal because you're gonna come up at an angle here and don't tie it to, uh, don't give it any constraints. And then you're gonna come here and go ahead and just stop once you get to the center line here, you know, right below the origin when that gold line turns on. And then what you're going to do is use your line tool again, come down here. You're going to, let's see, come just a little bit before the end. You're actually gonna angle back and you're gonna end up horizontal to this point. And then come over here to where you're right below the origin again. All right, and I'm gonna have you stop right there. Now I'm gonna warn you, when you start out with a blue ill-defined sketch and you start adding dimensions to it, Unshape will try and adjust everything to those dimensions um, as far as like common proportions would go. So, <clears throat> As we start changing things, if you see your blue lines, if you think, see things dancing around uh, really drastically, maybe more drastically than what you see on my screen or less drastically, don't panic. Again, work your way through that. It's a very common occurrence. And it's a key reminder as to why when you're doing sketches and layouts, you wanna think about uh, your design intent and you just wanna build good habits. So we're going to, work our way through this. And what I'm gonna do is I'm actually going to sketch a center line like so, coming down and I'm gonna make that center line a construction line. And then I'm gonna go ahead and give this line an angle of 
oopsies, not a dimension. I must not add my, there we go. I'm 17.35. No, that seem, might seem weird. I'm, I'm, okay, and see, we can already see an example of how every dimension we add is going to skew our, our layout and everything else just a little bit. So this line needs to be parallel to this line. So I'm going to go ahead and establish that constraint. Now that we have that angle locked in place, I can do so. All right, we're still doing okay. Now, let's see. The next dimension I'm going to go ahead and add is the dimension from here to here should be 0.3. All right. The next one I'm going to add is this dimension should be 0.5. All right, we're slowly getting things more defined as we go. We are going to go ahead and give the vertical dimension between these two points 0 0.097. All right, let's see. What else do we need here? I am going to give this point, the horizontal di distance to that point, a dimension of... 0.19, and then I'm going to go ahead and give this point to this point a dimension of 0.2. All right, that's not something we want. So I'm just going to drag this back out. Like so. All right. <clears throat> Working our way through this. I just got to figure out which dimensions we still need. Uh, the dimension from this horizontal center line that we're creating. Will enable us to set this at an angle of 15 degrees. All right, we're closer. Now the only thing we need is to figure out how to lock this in place. And what I'm gonna do is I'm actually just gonna provide that dimension for you. And so the dimension from here to here should be 3.8. Sweet, we have a fully defined almost rim profile. The reason it's almost rim profile is we're actually gonna come over here and <clears throat> finish the profile on the other side. Now to save some time, we're gonna use the mirror command. So select mirror and it says select the mirror line. So select that vertical center line we created as a mirror line. And the, the lines I want you to mirror is this line, this angle, this horizontal, this vertical, and then you are done mirroring. Last thing you're gonna do is just draw a line from this point to this point. And there we go. Now we have a closed profile, closed boundary and a wheel profile. Go ahead and hit check. The next step is we are going to revolve this. All right. So you're going to hit your revolve and it's going to ask what you want to revolve. Select the word wheel profile and then it's going to ask for your revolve axis. And as long as you pick anything up here that's Along that origin, you can pick that horizontal center line you drew, and we are going to call this um, just the rim revolve. 
Check. Now we have a wheel. Moving right along, the next thing we're going to do is sketch the hub for the wheel. So we're going to get on the right plane here. And I'm going to go ahead and do this sketch right on the right plane. So start a new sketch. Select the right plane to sketch in. Draw a circle starting at the origin. And that circle is going to have a diameter of 4.8. And then once that's done, you've got your sketch fully defined. Go ahead and label that of sketch. We're going to put D for diameter and 4.8. Again, we're going to annotate uh, some of the basic information in our design tree just to help get a quick visual of the process and may help us with troubleshooting down the road. So now that we have that diameter of 4.8, and as I'm looking at that, I'm wondering why is it dotted? Must be because it's behind the rim itself. Uh, so shouldn't stop us from extruding it. And we're gonna extrude that sketch, that hub sketch, a distance of two inches. And then we're gonna name this Hub sketch extrude L2, a length of two. And so what we should end up with is a, just a little edge popping through that side and then a thicker edge popping through the other side. Now that we have our hub established and extruded, what we're going to do now is sketch the profile for the spokes. And actually, we're actually not sketching the, the spoke profile as much as we are sketching the negative space, uh, the, the space we're going to subtract, um, leaving the spokes behind. So what that's going to look like is you're going to sketch it on the face of this hub. All right, so just select that, select the sketch and face of hub. So that's right where you want to be. And what we're going to do is sketch a couple of construction lines and a couple of um actual lines. So what that should look like is you're going to sketch a line from here and then we want it to land on that inner circumference of this rim here. Okay, but right now that's not available to us. To make it available, select it and hit U on your keyboard or in your toolbar It is this use button here. Now it should be available to us. So let's try drawing that line again and go from the origin right there. Boom. Okay, we're going to do that again from here to here. Establish that constraint with that inner perimeter. And then let's go ahead and sketch another line from here, just going straight down. All right, and let's turn all three of those lines into construction lines. And let's go ahead and give those some constraints. Let's start by telling this line that it has to be an angle of 36 degrees away from that center point, putting it at about the five o'clock position. Let's do the same thing with this one from that and give it a total of 72 degrees. Awesome. We got it at about the six o'clock position. Now what we're going to do is I'm going to project this circle as well. And then I'm going to go ahead and trim it. because We don't need this outer part. We just need this part here. And then again, I'm going to change that inner part to construction lines. So you got this little arc here that you're going to use to draw a line from this point to the outer to the inner circumference and this point to the inner circumference and that should look something like this come up here make sure you get that gold square showing that you've got that intersection happening and you're going to come just like that 
Same thing on this side. And then we're going to, to define these lines by telling them how far their points here should be from those construction lines. So select point to point, get that dimension pulled out there and set it at 0.5. You're gonna do the same thing on this side. Make that 0.5. All right, and now we have shape taking place here. We're gonna call this spoke profile sketch. And hit check. And we should be good with that. All right. So again, I think it's dotted because it is behind the actual part here. But what we want to do next is do a extrude remove. So we're going to hit our extrude, select remove. And what we're going to extrude is the spoke profile sketch. Now we might have to select which boundaries to remove here. And we want to set it for through all. And we don't want to remove that. So let's, oopsies, delete that. All right, I'm just going to click right here. And what we're running into is uh, <clears throat> I drew that sketch right on the right on this face. And so it should, when I select through all, remove everything, which it is, but it's removing it all in one direction. So if I select second in position, what I end up with is I'll remove it in both directions. I mean, dragging these arrows shouldn't do anything because, well, I guess it does, but let's just go ahead and select through all for that one as well and hit check. I will say uh, that caught me off guard. Usually, if you select through all, it just goes both directions, but um, I must have done something slightly different or in the past I've always done something slightly different. Either way, we figured it out. So we've got that extrude removed, and then let's go ahead and rename this. Uh, spoke profile. Extrude remove. And hit check. Awesome. Our wheel is beginning to take shape, becoming recognizable. I'm going to move this me over so I can see my design tree. Now, what I want to do is create a fillet in that corner there. So come up here, and what we're going to do is create a uh, fillet of 0.5 on that edge right there. Change that to 0.5. We're going to call it spoke profile inner fillet. So we got to do the two outside ones. And we're just going to go ahead and note that the 0.5 radius. So there we go. And then we want to do the same for these corners here. So like that one. And select that one. And we're going to set those. Those are at point two. So all we need to do is rename this profile outer fillets with a radius of point two.
And we have our uh, first negative space that what we will do is create a circular pattern for. So what that'll look like is you're going to come up here and select circular pattern. And first thing you do is look at this drop down menu. You've got part pattern, feature pattern, and face pattern. This is a feature that we're rotating around and we are gonna rotate the spoke profile extrude remove feature. Now the axis can be any really circle that we choose to go around. This is gonna be a five spoke profile. And now we have our five spokes and our five negative spaces. However, I wanna go back and notice how we have a fillet here, but not on any of the other ones. So that's a real easy fix. If that happens, all we got to do is come back into our circular pattern and add these fillets to the features to pattern. And watch, you'll see these points on the inside here turn into fillets. So let's select that inner fillet and see how that rounded that over. And then I'll change the angle here and watch these outer fillets. Once you select outer fillets, boom, that's taken care of for us. Very, very great, uh, powerful software. Saves you a lot of times if you make a simple mistake like that. So let's go ahead and edit this. Just call it spoke profile, circular pattern. And let's just go ahead and put times five, because that's how many instances we have. And hit check. We're done with our, so our wheels just really, we're, we're just breezing through this wheel here. So. The next thing we need to do is give it a way to be mounted to a vehicle. Well, we got to have our lug holes for that. So we're going to do a sketch on this wheel hub. And that sketch is going to be a, a diameter of four circle. So select circle. And coming from that origin, give that a diameter of four. And then we're going to make it a reference line. As it is construction geometry. So like that tool, press Q to make it a construction line. All right, now what we want is a line here coming down straight from the middle, going into the six o'clock position, make that a construction line as well. And then we're going to have a line going towards the five o'clock position. And we're going to have that line end right on that circle. So we get that golden halo. That circle is the chosen one. Turn that into a construction line as well. We're going to establish an angle in order to lock this uh, blue line in place with the six o'clock line that we drew. That angle we're going to make uh, 36 degrees. And then we're going to use this point to create a hole here in a second. But go ahead and call this sketch lug hole sketch. And diameter, D for diameter of four, and A for an angle of 36 to give us that five o'clock point, which will give us the first point where we drill a counterboard hole for the lug nuts. And then we'll do another circular pattern to create multiple of those holes. So we'll have a bolt pattern. All right, that sketch is done and taken care of. So now go up here to your hole wizard. And what we want is a counterboard hole. We want it to be a through hole. We want it to be a half inch hole. I, I did that, I've done this once already. So all the settings are left here by default. 0.5 and you want the counterboard distance to be 13 sixteenths and the depth of that counterboard to be 0.25. These pictures are really helpful as far as showing you what's really going on here. Then it just asks you for in this blue rectangle, the sketch points to place holes. So select that five o'clock point you created and you'll end up with a counterboard hole should look like this. And then just name this lug hole half inch counterboard. And there we go. Now we have that taken care of. Now the next thing we're going to do 
just create a circular pattern for that hole. So that'll look something like this, circular pattern. Entities to pattern, just select that lug hole half inch counter bore as something to pattern after you select feature pattern in that drop down menu. For your axis of pattern, just select that circle, the outer circle of the hub. And notice how it popped up in this window that's incorrect. So I'm just gonna simply hit that red X. Still got hub sketch extrude. Um, actually, this is not a feature that I wanna pattern. Hub sketch extrude. So let's just exit that. Again, you want lug hole, half inch counter bore and features to pattern. Click axis of pattern, select the outer diameter of the hub cap, and then change this to five equally spaced and then let's just name this lug hole circular pattern and we're just going to put times five and so now we got half inch counter board hole now we're going to add a few cosmetic and aesthetic features to this wheel that we've created and we're going to start by chamfering the outer edge of the hub here and we're going to give it a point to chamfer so select this chamfer and we're going to select that edge there, this edge here, this edge here, this edge here, and this edge here. Point two is what we want. And let's just name this outer hub chamfer. Uh, point two. I love how chamfer is spelled incorrectly according to Unshape when If you look at how chamfer is spelled, it's spelled correctly, <laughs> correctly right there. All right, I really, I really like the way that the look that that gives that. It really cleans that look up really super nicely. So now what we want to do is give the inner hub a little bit of a recess. So we're going to sketch on this face again, and we're going to sketch a circle right here, coming from the origin. And we're going to give that a diameter of 2.75. All right, and then we're going to uh, name that inner hub sketch E for diameter 2.75. All right, now what we're going to do is extrude, and remove that inner hub sketch diameter. And we're going to make that a depth of 0.5. And then just name this inner hub. Extrude remove 0.5. Boom. And so now we, oopsies. All right, that's okay. What was supposed to happen was it's supposed to create a recess, a nice decorative recess. Let's figure out what went wrong there. Uh, pretty easy fix. I had add selected instead of remove. So I'm gonna select remove. Okay, it's not removing anything because it's going towards where there's no material to remove. So I can click this arrow here and now it's going in. It's creating that little pocket that I want. All right, and again, a very nice aesthetic feature that will make a little, just a little bit more aesthetic here by chamfering that inner edge. All right, so select chamfer and we are gonna give this a chamfer of 0.5. What I've done is just selected that circle at the bottom of that pocket, change that to 0 0.5, rename this to inner hub chamfer. Actually, now that I see that 0 0.5, let's change this to 0 0.25. And that way when we say 0 0.25 for chamfer and hit check and what we have is a little pocket recess nice decorative feature it's chamfered in looks great and then you have a wheel so call me over i'll be checking your design tree for proper titles i will be checking sketches for fully defined sketches and Hopefully you made it through that without any major issues. But again, if you did, those issues are all excellent learning opportunities. 
where you will take away more than the hand-holding approach that I think the videos offer.